Okay, so if you just plug onto the domain, indeed, this is Boxing Ghana, and uh, we're live on all our social media platforms, i.e. Boxing Ghana TV, Boxing Ghana on Facebook, Boxing Ghana on YouTube, and of course, all the other handles. Indeed, you're very much welcome to the show, and uh, I must first apologize for last week, because we had some difficult challenges. We couldn't come your way, but we promised to make it up to you, and we promised that this is going to be the first and last time anyway. <laughs> the show is about, and like I always say, this show is much more interactive. So get interactive on my line on the plus one eight one five three zero two five four eight nine, and that's on my WhatsApp. I would love to take your messages. Uh, what's our main preoccupation for today? Yes, today we're discussing the Commonwealth Games and everything that has to do with it. Ghana's participation, of course. There will be much more concentration on boxing because you know that's me our main preoccupation and how well the Ghanaian team is doing over there. Um, so that's what we'll be talking about. But I have some very interesting personalities, uh, ones that were not able to grace the show last week because of the challenges, as you know, that we encountered. But then uh, they will be here uh, today. I'll introduce them very soon. But if you just, if this is your first time, let me just run you through the very synopsis of our show. First, we begin with uh, News Making the Boxing World, where my co-host, Daniel Debicotti, will be joining me for us to uh, elaborate a little bit as far as uh, the world of boxing is concerned, we run it up from Africa right down to the world and Ghana as well. So that's uh, it for you. Then, of course, we get into our main preoccupation. Yes, our main topic for today. That yeah, somebody will say the first matter for today, and that will be the progression of a boxer. Whose duty is it? Is it that of the boxer? Is it that of the manager or the promoter? We're going to look at all these angles together. And we look at certain boxes into uh, we, we, we actually zoom in on certain boxes and see how they progress. I.e., uh, Manuel Planche, I.e., our own Duke Maika, and you can name one. There's even Wasil Mohammed. So there's there's so many cases uh, to actually you know like pinpoint and talk about. But uh, let me not drink the soup out of the soup. Uh, let me not drink the soup out of the food. If if you don't know about it, it's a typical Ghanaian food. Don't worry about it. It's uh, me trying to make your adage. And I always say on this show, opinions are like the armpit. Some stinky, others freshy. It's a matter of personal hygiene. So keep it fresh, and uh, everybody will be cool. <laughs> of course, we welcome all your opinions as well. But Daniel Debicotti will be joining me pretty soon as we dissect uh, on the issues. Of course, you can see Daniel Debicotti already. I know that he's definitely going to tell me his location. So definitely, I'm just keep that side. David, you seem to be a fresh guy today. I mean, like with your with your nice haircut and everything, with my bushy hair, the combination is tight. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> uh, <it's enjoying. laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true. Anyway, but let's let's just go straight to uh, our main preoccupation. But you know that we have some very interesting personalities. If people are not I aware, let me just tell you that uh, the owner of Boxing Africa, if you not check Boxing Africa, you got to check it, boxingafrica.com. He will be here with us. He will actually be gracing the show with his knowledge uh, in boxing. He will be trying and help us understand the topic and the dynamics that has to do with the topic. I'm talking about Kenneth Buhari. I will introduce him very soon. Uh, my Kenneth Buhari is on the show today. And I can also tell you that uh, OP who is on uh, Ace Television, he's a social YouTuber. <laughs> he doesn't want me to reveal his identity, but that's okay. Uh, he will also be joining the discussion as well. So it's, uh, it's a loaded show with very astute personalities, well paved in boxing. So you're definitely gonna enjoy this show, trust me. <laughs> David, how excited are you? Let me, let me ask you this. I know that we've had Kenneth before and he graced the show with such, you know, a uh, plethora of knowledge the last time around. And this time, what are you expecting? Uh, I mean, you know that sometimes uh, the people who invest their energy, their time, and their money in the in the sport. So whenever you have the opportunity to talk to those people, like it's more or less like a sign of a relief. It's more or less like a sign of rejuvenation. So these are the people who have been spending their resources just to project the sport. So I think. We are glad and um, we are happy to have them on board to dissect the issue because it's all about Ghana sport, it's all about Ghana boxing. And for the sport to get to the greater height, 
you need people who are who have been investing their, their resources under person just to project the, the sport. So I think um we have to thank our staff to have them on board so that they can share their idea, their knowledge and now we can, we can move from one to ten in terms of projecting the sport. Okay, so today's discussion is going to be much more interactive. So I think I'm going to introduce Kenneth very soon because we'll be talking about the Commonwealth Games. I mean, some of the excesses, even from the Ghana team so far, how what we've done, uh, what are the things we can do and do it right. And of course, OP2 will be with us. And so today is going to be much more interactive. It's going to be a whole discussion. So I'm going to introduce our guest, Dave, so that we will do, even with the highlights, we're all going to do it together. Uh, because these are boxing people. So if uh, Kenneth can see and hear me, Kenneth, you're very much welcome to the show. Uh, okay, so let me try and put Kenneth through here. Yeah. Uh, okay, so yes, yes, yes. That's the handsome freshman you see over there. That's uh, Kenneth Buhari. He's the owner of uh, Boxing Africa. He's also director for um, our Heyman Sports. So, and guess what? He's a Ghanaian. I keep telling you, if you didn't know, if you're oblivious, he's a Ghanaian. Yes, he's a Ghanaian. Yeah. And OP, OP is also right behind. He doesn't want to, <laughs> he doesn't want me to reveal his identity, but that's okay. OP is with Ace TV, as you can see, Ace TV Boxing. OP, uh, you're very much welcome to the show as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, already I have tons of messages. It's, it's pretty interesting. Sometimes I don't even want to put a banner out there my test console get frozen with uh, messages with people questions but today i tell you the the viewers are not going to take over the show that one i can promise them <laughs> we are going to run the show it's as simple as that i mean the last time they had their way today we're going to have our way as well but they can still join uh, of course via all the social media platforms and of course on our whatsapp line as well which is plus one eight one five three zero two five four eight nine doc um i'll first start with you the commonwealth game so far um the ghana team the ghana contingent what has been your impression so far well um i was following kinley especially the the boxes i was really sad when um, um samed was disqualified and then in the beginning some of our boxes were not progressing but it seems that in the latter stage of the the um tournament uh we we had some people move on to the semis and have even gained some medals. So it didn't start out well, but I think it's ending okay. And we will take that. We've won some medals. So I'm excited that boxing came up with some medals. Okay, so um, Kenneth, you, you've you been following boxing so far. When you heard about the doping issue uh, with our own boxer, Samed, how did that make you feel? Because it's something which is totally, we are not accustomed to. When it comes to Ghana, these are things, new territories for us. How did that make you feel? Well, first, I want to say the only uh, open, fresh-looking person here from what I can see. Uh, regarding the dope, I'm very disappointed. Uh, like, uh, I think that, unfortunately, it wasn't much university. What exactly the authority of Ghana spoke about the topic, so it's really hard to ascertain what exactly what we what's the remedy going forward how did it was something he was given was it something he purposely rejected we really don't have uh, any of those details so it, it, it's difficult to put a, you know, to have an opinion yeah that's true uh, we're still trying to get uh, some details of the sort but there was a PR gimmick uh, initially but I'll talk about that in a, in a different platform. I'm sure that the person have realized that he was totally out of line, and he's, 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 uh, I guess we'll forgive him for that. Um, if my producer would check Kenneth's uh, sound for me, I'll be so, so, so very pleased. But uh, and we'll get Kenneth back again. I know that already I'm getting messages telling me that they, they could not hear <laughs> the, his message. But of course, we, we, I mean, Kenneth is on the show for what? One or more hours, so don't worry. We'll, we'll, we'll bring him back. Not too um david dave so far so good with the commonwealth games i have you been impressed with the ghana team boxing wise have you been impressed especially bearing in mind that it's it's more like 
the new entrants, those people that had no experience, they are the ones bearing the touch uh, and actually carrying and, and rallying Ghana forward. Um, producer, check David's mic for me. Okay. Okay. So, David, yeah, go ahead. I, I was saying that I'm highly impressed with your performance. Um, but the only thing that we have um, in the game was Shakur Samir and Dokin Inshu. But, like, yeah, 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 we are. This is a big issue when it comes to the Olympic game, uh, when it comes to the Commonwealth game. And we have people that before we got into this job, we look up to them, trying to justify or trying to defend what has happened. We shouldn't lie to ourselves. We have to cosplay the state. The 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 bad that was fine that was fine in Shakol's blood wasn't something that he ate food. It was something that he took. It was an intake. It was something that he took. And if you read about that particular bounce up, he said them like to for you to hydrate like it helps you to 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 dehydrate but what i was thinking was that maybe he took that bounce after so that it can help him make his way to him but he, he ended in in, in, the, in the bad thing for me i think it is something that the ghana um team has to place an inquiry on it they have to make a lot of investigation on it. And the person who needs to be blamed should be blamed. If the boss needs to be blamed, the boss has to be, needs to be blamed. If his coach needs to be blamed, he needs to be blamed. So I think we shouldn't be sleeping on it. An investigation has to be carried out because it is at the international level that this thing happens. And it's, 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 it's more or less like a bad image for, for Ghana boxing. Because of this thing that has been done, I kept on saying any Ghanaian boxer that traveled out outside the shores of Ghana is going to is going to affect us. We are uh, any boxer is going to be subject into this kind of thorough this thorough test as to whether they have banned sometimes or not. So I think it is it is bad on the part of on, on the part of the Ghana boxing team that this thing happened. But nevertheless, we are we have now secured three medals at the Commonwealth Games. Um two debutants winning favor and one experience was and that is why do man. So for me I think for for for, for the boxing part, um I'm 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 not too much satisfied but I think I have to be content with the three medals that we have got. The two debutants stole the show, they prove that they they, they, they belong in, in this team. They when given given the opportunity, they can shine and when given the, 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 the needed resource, they can win gold medal for Ghana. I think one of the boxers was to fight for the gold medal, for the gold medal, but because he, he, he fought sick, he couldn't fight, so he only uh, uh, settled for, for, for silver. So I think the team has done well, and we have to fight them at the back. Well, Kenneth, let me, let me bring you into this before I go to Doc. Um, first of all you you have instances where for many people it's the debutants who are actually making inroads for ghana some people have called for the fact that certain people should be taken out of the national team because they are there simply on the argument that they they have enough experience but it's proven time and over again even with some otechi that it's always the debutants who are really like doing very well in these competitions do you subscribe to that argument? To which argument? I wasn't clear what the... Um... Okay, so for many, uh, some people were included into the team because apparently they have experience, you know, and because of that, some debutants who had who had least experience were omitted from the team. But throughout this competition, it has shown us that it's always those debutants who had very, like, zero experience who actually goes there and do well. I mean, with, with the case of even some rotation point and the new two debutants, you you, you, you saw how, how well they felt. So do you subscribe to the argument that it's high time that we take away 
the factor where we are always trying to say, hey, we need to take some experience. We need to, yeah. But then we go there and it shows to us that those people who have like virtually zero experience, they are the ones that like do very well in the competitions. Well, I think there's, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be black or white. I think there's a way that uh, you can incorporate both those who have experience and also the uh, the debutantes. But I think the the issue that you're really getting at is what is the process by which these these athletes are chosen to participate in these events? And we know uh, within this group that a lot of times it's based on who you know and not necessarily how skilled you are um, and what tournaments you've won to qualify for these events. So um, that being the issue, I think that absolutely needs to stop and it needs to be only on a qualification basis. Whatever the parameters are, that should be the reason why you participate in these events whether you're experienced or not. Well, I, I, I guess you, you are right with that. Let me follow up with this. So for you, whatever qualification that we set for ourselves, if for instance, if there's a competition, should we say that someone, whoever wins, gets to represent Ghana? That should be the status quo. Is that what you're saying? If those are the parameters that are set, then that should be why you represent Ghana. I don't think that was necessarily the case for the qualification for uh, these Commonwealth Games. For what I understand, there was at least one controversy. Uh, I believe with Yao Ado uh, was was the fighter. So I'm not sure what happened that he was not part of the team, but that should not happen at all because it does rob uh, young fighters uh, of an opportunity. And I think at the very least, we should examine maybe uh, sort of like what we have in politics, term limits. If you've gone once or twice, uh, you know, make way for for the next person, maybe after after two tries, after two Olympic cycles, uh, something to that effect, because uh, there aren't that many opportunities for our fighters to to shine. And as you see, we have, you know, as you mentioned, two debutants who are uh, who reach the gold medal stage of, of the Commonwealth Games. So maybe that's something we should look into. Do you subscribe to the argument that when a coach says, I'm using my experience to select certain kind of boxes, should a coach be held accountable, especially after a competition? Would, it, would that be yeah. fair? Yes, absolutely. Um, I think we need to examine why each and every single fighter was selected. And if there are fighters that were selected just based on quote unquote, a trainer's experience, um, I, 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 I'm not quite sure how that logic works um the the eyeball test is a strange thing in boxing and we know that you, you can have a fighter who is 20 wins no losses and looks great but when they step up the competition maybe they get knocked out in the first round so we shouldn't go by the eyeball test there should be certain parameters that are used for qualification and it should not be based upon what one trainer says because we all have our biases we all we all play favorites and if you're part of my gym, I'm going to look to do everything I possibly can to make sure that you're on the team. You know, I, I may even pull some strings. So I think there needs to be uh, a greater set of rules rather than just someone's opinion. Doc, let me bring you to this. Um, I, you know, we've had this discussion where on different platforms where for many people, uh, if you resonate, you, you are very much embedded in this field. That's how I come and bring you into this. But can you just educate us about this substance which our boxer got tested? Is it from food? Because that's what some big personalities are saying that he probably took some banku and you know <laughs> it's something that can happen. In that. just educate me. Come on, what's what's was it really about? <clears throat> let, let me understand it. Well, um, um, the the substance that was detected was um, furosemide. Uh, furosemide is 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 a medication and. For those people that have blood, so it's not from Banku, no kinky no, or nothing. No. So let's say that that's okay. straight before we go into it. It doesn't come from okay. any food that we eat, so that's one. Um, and then I hope two, the communications director of the GBA is, is paying attention. To that. It's not. From <laughs> and Banku. then, and then two, mm. two. You you have to ingest it. It doesn't come from anywhere. So whether oh, it, it was come from in, anywhere. No, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck illiterate when it comes to this field. I just want this thing to sink in well. So it doesn't come from anywhere. Like, it's it's not from any food, any, like, I mean, it's something that you take in. It's like a pill. Yeah. You, either, you either inject it or you take it by mouth. Oh, really? You're guessing your system somewhere. 
and, and there's a reason why they test it first before they look for other for you guys who are sending me messages can you thank amin lamte for me i i think this is good education for all of us honestly i i have no idea i don't know i'm stuck in the truth when it comes to this field i'm learning i tell you so yeah. uh do me so, a favor uh, uh, okay. just tag him for me i know so you guys let me let me let because your show is short i will summarize it okay so when it comes to doping they are the actual um thing that agent that they are taking and then they sometimes take things to cover it up furosemide is one of those things that is classically used to cover up the actual agent being taken so when they do the testing they first test to see if you have any masking agent and then after that they will actually look for any substance you may have taken so that is what they found and that is why they said they were going to do the other testing to see what actually has been taken which we don't know yet they just said unless our boxer has high blood pressure and was taking high blood pressure medication which why would i take don't the know who has a high pre blood pressure to a tournament like that that would be hey I'm, I'm just giving the facts here I'm unless something like that it, that's the only way he would have gotten the agent but no it wasn't from food it was ingested somehow it was injected somehow so that that's that in in, in the short form of education that no difficulty i mean look look man look i'm i'm stuck illiterate when it comes to this world as a matter of fact i know some of you have tagged Amin Lamte, and i know he's watching now i am getting education right here i tell you i am getting education i i didn't know david yep. did you know that this thing wasn't from food <laughs> you knew something about I know it, it was I know it wasn't from food. I know that it's not from food. Say anything. Yeah. I know, no, no, I know it wasn't from food. And, uh -huh. and I, I saw the write-up of Ami Lamte trying to justify what happened. Because the stuff that was, was tested, it's, it's, it's not something that you can get from food. Unless something like doctor, unless you take it or you get it. He and came back later on to say that a common paracetamol can have that you know that's why i said that like when we were growing I, up I, I then we, we thought that we were looking up to but mm. for me like they are they are they are they are not keeping up to the current happening like the current things that are happening in the sport they are not keeping up to it and for me it's time for them to say goodbye to the sport because they are not showing us something that we have to learn they are rather taking us back and they are not they don't want to speak through to power because a substance has been found and we all know that you cannot just eat bank. this is not a canelo meat issue even canelo meat issue was even banned how much more you are taking the substance that has been detected which has been seen in your blood and for me i think uh we have to get fresh people in the in the, in the office just to educate us rather than listening to the old fashioned people and they kept on misleading us. Okay. So let me bring Kenneth in. Uh Doc. <laughs> so I just I just want to say that okay, um right. to what David said, mm. I think that um Sam what you are doing with this program is to try mm. and help find solutions to Ghana boxing problems. Mm. And that is why it's a no bar holding show. We should hit the problems on the head, on hit it right on. If there's a problem and we sugarcoat it and put throw dust into people's eyes, we are never going to get to where we are supposed to get to. If there's a problem, let's find the problem, how it happened, educate our boxers, educate our trainers. It could have been, I don't know, it could have been someone said, Hey, take this, it will make you lose weight. And and an ignorant boxer will take it trying to make the weight so it may not even be intentional but let's identify it as a problem educate the boxes educate um the administrators people that handle them and let's not let it not repeat itself again if we sugarcoat it and attribute to other things we're just going to be there next time a boxer is going to take something and then this will happen again we should use it as an education point despite how bad it looks you know many people do say that this show is an academic sport i do subscribe to that i think here you get much more education of course i've been educated as well but Kenneth, let me bring you to this so far you've watched the commonwealth games the ghana contingents 
Uh, what has been the pluses and the minuses for you? Well, I think we just discussed the big, big minus and the uh, the lack of uh, transparency from the GBA. And um, like you, I'm baffled. I, I I heard something about food as well, which made no sense. Uh, the the as as Op mentioned, it's a uh, it's an anti-diuretic. It's used to wash away. Yeah, and, uh, and, and, and funny enough, the person was educating me. The person was telling me he's been in the media for 20-something years. He doesn't even know how long I've been in the media. But anyway, that was cool. I, I guess that's good. It's good, it's good to bamboozle your way, especially with... <laughs> <laughs> right yeah, there. yeah. I, I, I think, I, I think the, the Ghana, first the Ghana Boxing Authority needs to do a better job with their PR. Because no statement like that should ever come from a PR person, a communication person, nothing at all. Not only is it, uh, quite frankly, nonsensical, but it makes us look uneducated to the rest of the world. That's one. But uh, that aside, I think there have been, you know, great, great pluses so far as what we've accomplished. Anytime you can go to an international uh, tournament and come away with at least three medals, that's 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 impressive, especially, uh, you know, a country of our of our of our small stature in terms of population. So I think that Ghana has a lot uh, to be uh, proud about. Uh, we, we, we had a successful uh, tournament. My only prayer, of course, is that the fighters progress from here on out because you and I both know that it doesn't always turn out that way. That's true. And that's what we're going to be talking about pretty soon. Our main preoccupation, progression of a boxer. Uh, whose duty is it? Is it the boxer himself? Is it that of the manager? Is that of the promoter? These are the three different angles we're trying to look at it. So uh, we just gonna hook it straight, and uh, I'm gonna start with my co-host Daniel David Cote. David, let me get this from you. We're just gonna put the issues of the common world somewhere. Of course, we'll have much, much, much more time to discuss that. But our main preoccupation: uh, progression of a boxer. Is it the responsibility of the manager, the boxer himself, or the promoter? For you, let me have your take. But when I say it's, it's hand in hand, it should be the, both the promoter, both the manager. Because um, if you're a good manager, at least you have to get the promoter out there to put your boxer on the big show. Example can be said like, let's use Vishukomi as an example. Vishukomi has a good manager, that is Amun Bede And he's now with um, um, Ludi Bella. And because Luke Bella has a, a connection with uh, top rank, now Vishikomi is fighting on top rank, Vishikomi is fighting on ESPN. So it is on here. And I kept on saying, if you have bad manager, it will be very difficult for you to get a good promoter. Anytime that you get a good, a good manager, it's possible that you get a good promoter. And another example can be said of Duke Maika. When Duke Maika was fighting on the PBC, it was through the initiative of Fit Colony in collaboration with Amu Bediakun, that Dukumega had the platform to fight on TV. So I think it's only on, you have to get a good manager before getting a good promoter. But if you have a bad manager, it will be, it will be very difficult for you to get the progression, to in the progression line. And that same Dukumega, now because of contractual issue that he has with his manager, for the past few years, he said to take or oh, is it easier to step into the ring? So for me, like, it's hand in hand, but the fair, it should be the skill of preference or opportunity cost. Get a good manager before you can get a good promoter. And then if you start with a bad manager, then it means that your career is going to take a, a, a low drive. Well, of course, that's according to Daniel David Cote. My test concern is actually freezing with, with, with messages. I mean, like, I'm getting tons of messages. Uh, your, your your input. I like it. I like the fact that you guys are all very much interested in the topic and you actually giving credence to my my guests uh, for their knowledge in the field that we're discussing. Of course, like I told you, we all we always bring uh, big personalities here, people who are very much well built when it comes to boxing. But I'm going to bring in Doc here. Doc, now let's look at it from this way. Uh, you've seen boxers like Wasiru Muhammad. You've seen boxers like Jesse Manuel Planch. Even, even see Duke Micah, even the likes of Ukum Banku and the rest. There's been one thing running through for you, and I'm not going to lead you with this question. I'm just trying to make it as open as possible. Whose responsibility is it to make sure that a boxer reaches that height? 
Well, as um, uh, your co-host David said, it's a combination. There has to be some synergy between the boxer, the promoter, and the manager. Everyone has to do their part. And I, you did mention some names. Some of these guys that you mentioned, I guess you would say that some of them may have done their part in terms of in the ring as boxers. We, we saw their talent, like Wasiru, like Menyo. We saw their talent. We expected them to be somewhere right now with the likes of the Comes and the um, Dogways where they are now. But they aren't there. And you, you, you ask yourself why. Some of them have had good managers and some, some okay promoters. Um, some of the cases, you have to know how you talk about it because of contractual issues. But one of the things that I personally have witnessed, besides the fact that these boxers are good at what they do, has been contractual issues. And I'll tell you that this thing has plagued Ghana boxing for a while. And I can't begin to list the names of boxers that I know that sign multiple contracts sign with this person sign with that person the other person finds out and then they try to sabotage the boxer some of these boxes have not made it because of some of these things and it all comes with um how do i say the knowledge and sometimes the ignorance of the sport sometimes they feel like um um uh, administrators don't talk promoters don't talk managers don't talk but all these guys are friends so a boxer may be good but his attitude outside the ring may be what doesn't let him progress. And I'll talk about what some of the things that the managers and the promoters do that hold, also. Hold, hold on, hold on a bit. Uh, I'm going to bring yeah. Kenneth in. Uh, Kenneth, um, you, you've been, you, I mean, you are very much expert when it comes to boxing. Let me understand this. Educate me. What is the role of a manager? What is the role of a boxer? And what is the role of a promoter in all these secrets? Well, that's a, a very good question. I think one that people are still debating today worldwide. Um, so let me backtrack a little bit. Listening to what the other two gentlemen said, they said that it, in order to develop a boxer, and, and this is to answer your question, in order to develop a boxer, you need uh, synergy between the promoter, the manager, and the fighter. But if there's one common theme that if you notice uh, in their statements, it's basically that the onus is on the manager. It's the manager's job to develop a fighter. That's how it's always been. If you if you will permit me for a second, if you go back to the uh, beginning of boxing as boxing expanded and, and grew into this large international sport, uh, fighters used to not sign with promoters. There was no such thing. A fighter signed with the manager. A promoter's job was simply to promote the event that took place. And this is how it was in boxing up until maybe 40, 50 years ago when promoters discovered that if I can work out an agreement with a network, with a certain platform, then I can force the fighters to sign contracts with me because in order to be, get on television or in order to get on a certain platform, they need to go through me. So I can use that as a way to sign fighters. But it wasn't that way before. In the past, it was a promoter's job was simply to promote uh, events. Now promoters because they have a uh, certain promoters because they have that that pull and ability to handcuff boxers who want to get on tv that gives them more strength and and you know allows them to say hey you know what you're gonna have to fight this person if you want to be on tv uh you're gonna have to fight this person or or someone from my stable um but that should not be the case the job of uh developing a fighter should be on the manager and if you you get truly granular with it and even in the statements that were made you'll see that 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 everyone is sort of saying that it, it's up to the manager the manager has to put the fighter in the right places get them with the right promoters get them the right trainers uh put them in a proper situation to reach their full potential okay let me let me follow up with this i'll give you a classical example because i, I don't want us to be just you know running through the main surface I want us to talk about this because look i don't want to start reading messages if i tell you the number of messages that i've got some people using classical cases and all that and if i tell you the kind of the kinds of personalities who are watching the show who doesn't want me to mention their names you'll be amazed it makes me feel proud that yes this show has really come of age people of you know stature you you'll be amazed 
even the whole hierarchy of the GBA, they're actually watching, but I don't want to mention names. Now, Kenneth, I want to give you a classical example. And here we hold no prisoners. We say it like this, because we're trying to find a solution. At the end, it's about Ghana boxing. We want the perfection of Ghana boxing or near perfection. We're all trying to rally on. But let's talk about Harrison Lati. If you ask Harrison Lati right now, he will tell you, or Richie Lati, he will tell you that it is just uh, some greedy promoter who was just trying to take advantage of him. He wouldn't let him and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. These two, the, between that boxer and the manager or the management, Carbic Promotions, a lot has ensued. I'm sure you follow that story and everything. In this case, who would you situate or where would you situate the problem? Well, I think that their their fault lies on both sides, but quite frankly, the real issue is the system that was already in place that forced the fighter to do the things that that he did. If the reasons I've heard, and you're talking about the situation with Cabic Promotions, I believe, yes. and uh, Richard Harrison Larte, the yes. boxer, and I know the he's reason, watching as well. The yes. reasons I've heard, the reasons I've heard as to why Cabic were in the right make no sense to me wouldn't fly in any portion of the world that well i invested a certain amount of money into you therefore when the one big check comes i'm not only going to take my percentage but i'm going to take a good portion of what you are owed because hey i invested a lot of money into you and i need to make that back that's not how it works that's not that's not how business works you have to continue to invest in that fighter until whatever the two sides signed until that until both of you uh, so that both of you can fulfill that contract and you can ultimately get back your return but if i signed a contract where a fighter is to receive fifty thousand pounds and contractually i'm supposed to receive a certain percentage there is no reason why i should take a greater percentage than that that's just ethically wrong there's 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 no right involved in that what, what you no say what you say what what you say to that person that says that, okay, so I've put in my money, this investment into this boxer. This is a fight I thought the boxer would win. The boxer didn't win. I know that his stocks are going to drop. I know that my investments are probably going to go down the drain. So I need to start making uh, certain adjustments. What do you say to that argument? Look, I'm playing the devil's advocate because I am I, 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 with all this. I appreciate yes. the argument. I'm just wondering in what other sector of the world does that work? If you make a bad investment in the stock market, you can't say, hey, uh, give me back all the money that I've invested in this stock and then some because the stock has gone down. It just doesn't make any sense. Unfortunately, the the fact that the fighter lost says as much about him as it does you. Both of you have lost. His stock has fallen as well. He's not going to perhaps make as much money uh, in the future. So, I mean, just looking at it from a humane perspective, what right then do you have to take away from his earnings? After all, he was the one who was taking punches. He was the one who was in that ring. And furthermore, the two of you signed an agreement beforehand. So who is being dishonorable, not living up to the terms of that agreement, if you take more than what the agreement allots you to? Wow, this is deep. This is good education. I'll come back to you. Doc, let me bring you in before I bring David in. Um, I'm, I'm listening to some of these things and um, I'm getting much more education, I tell you for a fact. And I know all those stakeholders are watching. I know for a fact. I mean, I don't want to mention it. I know for a fact that they are watching. I think that this, these are some of the things they should be taking. It's important so that we can improve and promote our boxing. Uh, I'm getting education. Doc, let me ask you this. Uh, let me give a typical example. Uh, like I said, here we hold no prisoners. I'll mention it. Michael Amumediako, uh, he, for many, they think that he is the one who stalled the career of Michael. Um, I'm scheduled to have an interview with him here. And of course, uh, our condolences goes out to him because he lost the dear one. We'll get him on the platform, not to waste the money. But Doc, beside that fact, what do you say to people that says that Duke Michael's career was halted no, probably because the, the boxer was a little bit disrespectful, but also the manager just wanted to punish him. So the manager just decided to store his career. What do you say to people that has that perception? 
Well, um, disclaimer, I, I know the, the personality you mentioned very well. Um, but I would say that if uh, Mr. Bediako did that, which I know for any person, any serious person, business-minded person who would do something like that, for lack of a better word, that would be stupid. You know why? Why would somebody invest in a boxer and then at some point say that I am going to not find you fights, I'm not going to give you better opportunities because you disrespected me? That makes no sense whatsoever. And if I was a manager, I'm not going to do that. And I doubt Mr. Bediaku would do that, that he would intentionally store the career of Duke because he disrespected him. I don't think he would do that. That would be that. I don't even think the rich people will let money go into the drain like that. So I doubt if that that is the reason. What I understand was there were some contractual issues which I cannot speak to. Uh, I do not know, so I can't. But I don't think that uh, any manager of the sort of uh, Mr. Bidiako will actually say, ah, because you disrespected me, I'm not going to give you better opportunities and we make money together. I, I doubt that was the case in Mike's case. However, is it, is it possible that the manager will decide that, look, for what you've done, I'm also going to make sure, I mean, we've had it. I mean, there's been conspiracy theories all over, not just with Amu Bidiako, like some other promoters and even managers will decide that, okay, for your disobedience, this is what I'm going to do to you. I mean, is it possible? That's it. Maybe. Maybe I mean maybe, maybe they I haven't it. they haven't invested they haven't invested that much that they can afford to lose. But even if I was a manager and I hadn't invested invested in a boxer, but I know their potential, who cares about disrespect? You gotta get your money. You gotta get your respect where it matters. What what could a boxer do that would disrespect you that you see? millions of dollars in the future i mean come out and say that you are you are chopping his money uh he's not getting his money's worth um what have you been doing again uh you are you you you're not giving him the kind of fight that he needs and of course you uh pay, you are not honoring your side of the contract and because he's stuck illiterate you know you sort of do some underhand dealings that he's not privy to this are the examples Let, I'm giving you. Like you're said, right. You're right. And I, 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 I kind of, I kind of want to speak to that, yeah. Because uh, um, that that issue of I, uh, early trades and managers spending the monies of boxers kind of penetrates through the core of Ghana boxing. And I wish that through these discussions we can get to the bottom of it. But I would think that any manager, again, like um, uh, Kenneth said. Um, investing in a boxer is a long-term investment. Before Kome gets there to make 800000 or $1 million, or Dogwe gets to make that hundreds of thousands of dollars, you would have invested time, energy, sometimes even burn bridges with other people. So it's not worth stalling somebody's career or deliberately saying that you are not going to let the boxer progress. Even if you have not spent a dime on him, but you know this boxer is good and he's going to make me money. I don't think anybody who has any not like common sense would do that. So when I hear stories like that, I, I just don't know where they are coming from. I kind of put it on the same stage as the Banku and Forostomai situation. It makes absolutely no sense. Could, no, it be that, here. No, could, it, could it be that there are there some you know there could be something egregious oh. out there that will make a manager not want to put their money or effort in helping a boxer but as to disrespect that he's telling somebody that he's chopping my, my money I, I don't know i don't know which manager would do that I, I think i've spoken enough but i don't i don't think any manager especially of bediaco sort would deliberately store a boxer because the boxer is talking about them or whatever you know, I I know the business I really agree. and these are some of the questions i'll put before him like i said here yeah, we hold no prisoners we ask the questions that people really like you know want to have answers to but david let me bring you into this david how crucial is it uh that a boxer at least has some kind of knowledge when it comes to contractual issues because you had issues where Boxes will go like, I didn't sign this contract. I didn't sign this number of years. And money just goes like, this is your signature. 
And we all know that most of our boxes are virtually semi-literate or stack literate. How crucial is it? Dave has Dave. Okay. Um, Dave, I'll, I'll let Dave take the lead. Yeah. Uh, but Dave, let, let me push I'll, I'll be your Dave, you <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll see to you later. <laughs> But, but uh, I don't know if you got the gist of my question. Maybe I should probably roll it. Yes, I'm... You did? Um, uh, can you repeat the question again? <laughs> now you hold it there. Mm -hmm. Kenneth, were you able to get the input of my question? <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. Kindly kindly address that. Whilst I, I deal with David. Mm. Yeah, every, every fighter should have some sort of lawyer or person they trust to review any contract. Not every, Not just every fighter, every human being. I mean, if if you, you you sign your signature on on a piece of on a on a document that's binding, um, you should either be able to understand what you're reading or have someone you trust or or someone you're paying uh, to handle that sort of thing. Do that. That that goes without saying. I don't think that necessarily applies in this situation. And I think a lot of people who who the conspiracy theories or some of the arguments uh, that we hear regarding the situation we're discussing come from people who would do those kind of things. But I think a manager of a certain stature who's reached a certain point, it's not it's not something that they would do. I'm just gonna punish you or sideline you. I know that situation intimately uh, very well, and it's just, it's very, very disappointing. Let me let me ask you this, since you are very much, you know, privy to that whole situation. What do you say to people that goes like, Probably if Duke Micah has taken a different turn, if things hadn't turned out that way, his career sort of would have taken a different kind of direction. Anybody who would have given him that much concentration. But after losing that world title shot, is like his career is totally halted. What do you say to people that say that it's probably because of what he did, his excesses, that amounted to that? Well, I have bad news for those people. They're going to get a, a hard dose of truth today. Uh, so for the people who say that they either weren't involved or weren't there, uh, because the issues began well before, uh, you know, Duke Micah lost a world title fight. It should be added that his manager got him a world title fight. And I think that to answer that question simply, look at Richard Comey. Has he not lost fights? Has, oh, yeah. has his manager abandoned him? It's the same manager. Has he abandoned him? Absolutely not. Richard Comey is still getting fights and 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 still being featured main event on on major platforms in the United States of America and still making excellent uh, purses. So that's not the case. I'm sure that the manager would like to continue making money with the fighter as well, win or lose. And he has done that with Richard Comey. I'm speaking about Michael Mubidiakou. So why would he not have done that with Du Micah? I know personally that the issues began well before. Uh, the loss to uh, John Real Casimiro, which was a world title fight on, on, on PBC. And uh, it just was a snowball effect after that. And I think that the fighter really needs to look in the mirror because a lot of that uh, truly falls on him. And I'm just, as a person who was involved and wanted to see the best for him, I'm just very disappointed in, in how things turned out. Some of the things he said that were 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 false and i don't know if he's just getting fed false information but um clearly there's a lot of misinformation being floated around before i go to david whose responsibility is it so that because i know that uh parts in the world that you are in you have fighters who are even guided don't you just go out there and just make certain remarks these are all certain things that the manager does so if these things comes out who would you situate the blame to? Or who would you blame? Or who? what's the way forward? Let me let me put it that way. Let me just try and what's the way forward? Because for me, uh you watch a boxer like Duke Micah, not that literate. Yes, he, he can speak fluently and everything. And but you ask yourself, when those excesses came out, who would you blame? Would that be the manager? Or would you say that it's it's the boxer? And what's the way forward for you, Kenneth, on that? Well, I think that in, in Duke's case that, you know, when you're given certain opportunities, you may not necessarily, there are a lot of people who are intelligent, who don't have a Harvard degree. There, there are, are people we see on TV, the Jay-Z's of the world and so forth, who can hold court with presidents, 
but don't have anything behind, beyond a junior high school education. There's a certain thing that all of us have and it's called common sense. And at some point you need to use it. And so, you know, as I mentioned before, I think for the fighters, they need to get a, a third party involved who is not involved with any side. In Duke Micah's case, obviously, uh, he's been through a plethora of managers and, and different issues. And what he did was when he had an issue with one person, he went with a person who, with an adversary of that person. They're not going to tell you uh, what's necessarily factual. They're going to tell you what benefits them. So you tell me who, who is, who, who's at fault here. That's a typical Ghanaian culture where like, you know, where something doesn't go right, they sort of fall back to the other opposition. Uh, especially with those people who are not much more enlightened. And I use enlightened in like quotation marks, forgive me for that. And, but some, some sit somewhere, and of course I'm getting messages that goes like, okay, Kenneth, uh, nice, nice uh, submission. Uh, and I love what you're saying, but based on your submission, I think that then we should sit with Duke Marcus issue at the doorsteps of the manager. I think that the manager should be the one to coach the boxer and even not allow the boxer to speak on, to speak unnecessarily. Uh, okay, that's 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 cool. Um, I guess the import is he's wrote, written a whole essay and he's a big personality. I I'm just summarizing it. I'm trying to summarize it. And forgive me, big man. Uh, you are also a doctor. Forgive me. Um, I I can't read all the messages because of time. But Kenneth, I'm sure you got the import of it. What you say to that? Okay, I'm, I'm, you know what, let me share my version of, of what happened with Duke Micah, because I really, I've never really spoken on it. Like I said, I was, I was intimately involved in it. And I saw a lot of articles written in, in Ghanaian outlets about it. Some of them even uh, mentioned my name because Duke Micah put my name in those articles, but the journalists never bothered to reach out to me. I always tell every journalist and Sammy, as you know, um, you are to get two, three, four, five sides of the story. Uh, if possible. Duke Micah had a situation where he had two managers, co-managers, uh, with differing opinions as far as where his career should go. And um, I knew both managers well. Both managers were friends of mine. And I've lost friends because of this situation. And, you know, Duke, Duke was having issues with not just his managers, but with his trainer, with other boxers. And this was a serious situation. I flew out to New York to see him a couple times, wasn't able to get him. Uh, finally, the, the third time I, I went to see him and sat down with him and, the man, and one of his managers, Duke, and I had a conversation. Before the conversation began, I took a tape recorder and I put it right between us because I have a lot of experience with boxers. So I put it right between us. And we spoke and I asked him questions. And what Duke told me was that his old trainer from Ghana was horrible, was terrible, was not teaching him things, that Michael Amutbidiaku, his current manager, is like a father to him, has stood by his side, was great, that his other manager was using him, didn't have any interest in him. Mind you, his other manager was a friend of mine. Yeah. And 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 he told me that that he, he wanted to he wanted to continue yes, uh, he wanted to continue his relationship with Michael Amubidiaku, that he wanted to, to be on PBC, understanding that re-signing and, and extending with Michael Amubidiaku would give him those opportunities. That's what he wanted. These are things that, that whether he chooses to remember or not, I, I, was very, I was very transparent with him that I have that are true. And so because of what he told me, I witnessed his signature to extend his agreement with his manager, not because I was friends with this manager or be friends with that manager, but because I thought that that was the right thing for the boxer because the boxer sat in front of me and told me that this is what he wanted. And I understood and I respected that. And I said, you know what? Well, then I'm going to support you in what you want if you feel this is best for your career. In retrospect, I probably should have stayed out of it. But the reality is that he was coming to you know PBC anyway. And so when he came to our platform, we went above and beyond this this is a person who hadn't fought on tv before i worked with his manager to get him media workouts so that he could become a known person we went above and beyond for duke he had i believe three fights on the pbc platform the third one 
uh, being the loss to John Will Casimero. By that point, he had issues with his trainer here in the United States. He had issues with, with his current manager, and then he lost. And before I could blink, the people that he sat in front of me and had bad mouth and told me he wanted nothing to do with, I saw all of a sudden he had gone immediately back to those people and was now bad mouthing the other side and dragging my name into certain things um, that, you know, regrettably I, I, I was upset about. Now, he's in a situation now where he wants one manager to free him of his contractual obligations but he's not living up to his fighter obligations and he's put himself into this mix and 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 you know there's a certain conundrum regarding the situation that i don't know if it can be resolved it's a few years now but that's the truth that i know regarding the duke micah situation okay so we heard it here first uh, of course you watch it here first not to waste about it but doc let me bring you into this doc um so i know that media is your friend um i also know for a fact that this is not the first time these things are happening i mean a typical example and a classical example is wasil muhammad after a manager spends so much on the boxer the boxer has his own portion as well you do have these things happening everybody has his own you know history as it were. everybody has his own you know uh, grievances as it were. but the boxer comes out and says i'm not fighting anymore i think that he's cheating me i think that he's using me what makes boxers feel that way why all right, so I, I think um, it, it boils down to education, and um, and sometimes, and I'm not going to relieve the managers of some of these things as well, because we know some managers, both Ghana and abroad, um, using different ways cheat boxes. So sometimes these boxes have legitimate concerns. Other times, it's just lack of education. And I'll tell you one of them. I mean, we discussed Lawson, but assuming that. Um, one of the things that uh, in Ghana is very prevalent with boxers is once you sign them, a manager signs them, they expect at least they, they get a rental money to rent a place. There is nowhere in the I was, I was, I was going over there. <laughs> there is nowhere, <laughs> the, there is okay. nowhere in the boxing manager's contract that you yeah. should do it. Of course, you can put anything in a contract. But if a, if a manager decides to help you rent a, a house or an apartment and then you get a fight and he takes that money out of it because that's how it was agreed on, you cannot say he's cheating you. They expect some of these, boxers sometimes expect some of these things, um, these perks with do this for me, do that for me. And when, when it gets to the time where the manager feels like I need to take the money that I put in you, then... They are labeled as no, the let, let me give you a classical example. And mm -hmm. like I said, here we give classical examples. I mean, things that are happening. I know, for instance, Richard Latte was taking certain remunerations. I've spoken with Ivan, and he's made mention of uh, certain overtures that he did for, for him, which is, which is great and all that. But wouldn't you agree that it will only be prudent that you make the boxer know or probably put it on paper, let the boxer sign that, this and that that I'm giving you, I'm doing for you. I'm going to make sure that I rebate it back or I'm, I'm taking it back. In your oh, that, that is what should be happening. And I, I hope that that's what happens. But I think any, any manager who, who knows what they are doing should be putting some of this in the contracts. And even if a boxer cannot read or write, they should have somebody who knows the local language, read it, explain to them, let them understand. Or even during the instance of the first time they give the money for that rent, it should be signed that this thing that I'm doing for you is not free. Even Bill Gates, um, Warren Buffett, the richest people, Elon Musk, they don't just give money for free like that when they, they think they are investing. When you are investing in something, you want something back. So these things need to be told to boxes and managers need to be truthful about these things. They shouldn't try to sneak it up on them. And I think sometimes the, the, the problem is the communication. Because, for example, if I'm renting a place for you, that is 2,000 Ghana cities. And for a whole, um, what do you call it, three, three years, you are just getting your first fight. If you do the math, even when you convert it into dollars, that's a significant amount of money. And so if a boxer gets a fight 
um, or for 10,000 or 15,000 or 20,000, and you take your percentage in addition to several thousands of dollars, they are going to say that you are cheating them. And this is what happens most of the time. And I feel like it's about time some of these contracts are signed between several people so that they are witnesses. So that it's not, I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know. And I, I personally think some of these managers, they do it. The boxers say they don't know because, of course, we know that they are illiterate. But I feel like, for me, for instance, if I was to sign with the boxer, I'm going to make sure they have some family members there. They have some GBA personnel there. They have people there that can testify that they knew what they were doing so that in the future, they don't come back and say, I didn't know. But before I forget, your case study that you brought up with um, um, Kenneth, yeah. and somebody sent you a message talking about, shouldn't it also be in the lap of the manager, in this case, Mr. Bedi Akon, to solve the issue because we said that manager should actually be the person that's doing this. Does the public know, or Sam, do you know that Duke has not spoken to Mr. Bedi Akon in two years? How do you solve a problem when you are not even communicating? And I have it on word that offers have been made for fights. So what the, what the things that a manager will be expected to do, Mr. Bediako has tried to do it, but my, uh, Duke Micah doesn't want to work with him anymore. So I think that's what um, Kenneth was saying, that they are at a crossroads where it's like I have at least invested. I want to continue to invest to see where you can go so that I can get something out of it. But you don't want to work with me anymore. What businessman would just want to lose money like that? So when people only say, oh, Mr. Bedi Akon doesn't want to release him of his contract and all that stuff, how about what he may have also put through? Should he just go to waste so that we just see the boxer? So we have to be business-minded when it comes to boxing in Ghana. Okay. Out here, boxing is a business. It's not about just fighting and making the best fights. If somebody invests in you, rest be assured, at some point, they are going to expect their um, okay. dividends back. And I just want to do that. Mr. If if I was Mr. Bediako, I'm not, I'm not going to just let a boxer go that I've invested. Uh, why, is the, why doesn't the boxer want to work with me? So I mean, if your duty if, is to make sure that this kind of is totally brought to a halt. Whose duty is it, Doctor? I think I think they need an arbitrator, and at this point, it gets legal. If they are not even communicating as men, like I'm, I'm your manager. At least you had a relationship with me. I have taken you to places. Talk to me. Let's see how we all can make money together. This should be easy. You've made a name for yourself. I'm willing. I have done it with other boxes with the Kome. I'm willing to work with you. Talk to me. Let's see where we can all make money together. Communication has to start. And if communication doesn't start, then you leave it in, in, the, in the courts. And I believe that both lawyers of Mr. Bediako and Duke are going at it. But at the end of the day, who suffers? Okay. Who suffers? Let me, let, let me put this. And if I don't do it, he will, he will cut my head off. A professor from the University of Ghana Business School, he says, I mean, do not attempt to stop this show because of time. This is the best discussions I've ever watched in a long time regarding Ghana sports. Kudos to you guys. Uh, thank you. So, so I'll, I'll, I'll let it take over, but that is the situation, Sami. Mm. I mean, it's disheartening. Mm. If I'm to sign a boxer, I better have a good relationship with that boxer. Mm. Somebody asked me, what if um, I, I was speaking about one boxer that I was interested in and I was asked, what is the temperament of this boxer? <laughs> Asking, how is this boxer like? Do you have a relationship with him? And I said, yeah, we, ha we do have a relationship. I can trust him. Because it gets to some point, people talk to these boxers. Other boxers talk to them. Other trainers talk to them. Other managers talk to them. So you have to have a relationship with your boxer where he can listen to you and be like, oh, this man has my interest. We're going to make money together. But if it gets to a point where it is with Micah, where there is no communication, there is a big problem. And honestly, if you ask me from what I know, where Micah's situation is going, it's not going to go anywhere. 
we should just write the guy off. And it's very sad because he's a great talent. Oh, but I, I'm going to play the devil's I, advocate. I uh, don't hold it right there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> See, um, I have tons of messages. I have boxes, even known boxes who are sending me messages. I have people, former boxes, that wants to be on the show. They just simply want to bring their portions of it. Everybody seems to be talking about managers and their, as it were, dubious nature. Uh, it's it's pretty interesting. I, am, I like the fact that we are talking in a different light. But, you know, I can't bring you guys on the show. The best I'm able to do, you just send me messages. I know, yes, many of you just want to be on the show and speak out your issues. That's cool. We'll probably have time for you on a different date, but not this time. This time we are looking at uh, uh, the, the solutions, the progress. You know, we just want to try and situate these arguments. I'm sure that with time we'll do that. And forgive me, most of you people who are saying that you are sending me messages and I'm not reading them. Kindly do forgive me. Uh, I will find time. We'll try and find a way, maybe like 10 minutes, and just read all the messages at once, spontaneously. Do forgive me. Um, but I want these shows to be situated very well. I want us to reach a certain level. Forgive me. Certain pedestal. I, I have a lot of messages, over 200 messages. And that makes me, I mean, very proud. Just keep the messages coming. I'm not even going to like announce the line again because, you know, I think that I should do justice to what I already have before I ask you to make an input. I totally agree with you on that. But David, let me bring you to this. David, you've, you've listened to all these personalities. What would you take from it? Because I, I still have a lot of questions in as much as our time is, but we'll still we'll try and do just one hour, 30 minutes. We wouldn't want to go beyond that. I know that, and I've gotten, I've gotten over 200 messages, David. I've gotten some from even former boxes, well-known former boxes who just want to be on the platform speak their issues out some of them feel that but most of them majority of them feels we're doing justice to the issue anyway and that makes me very happy let me bring you in you've heard all these you know very astute personalities you heard your submissions what do you take from it um i think when it comes to duke Michael's, honestly duke Michael's case is more or less like a steady case for both boxers and managers and I would say my boss, Kenneth Boeri, was a little bit diplomatic in terms of the issue. But let's, let's be straight and let's see, see it as it is. Because I also have, I'm privy to certain information regarding the Mekes contractual issue with Amubi Diakon. For me, I think the Mekes needs to be sat down and it needs to be educated. And the way Dukmaga is moving, he's not throwing away his career because he's a great talent. For me, what Dukmaga has done, he has demonstrated that he's one person, whenever he sees a new manager, then will be jumping to manager. Dukmaga was initially being managed by uh, Jacob Zwene. Then he moved to Amubi And for me, the information that I've got it. Dukmeka wants to, to want, like, though my boss, Kenneth Burado, was diplomatic, he did not want to mention the person's name. But Dukmeka is being co promoted, co managed by Kate Colony. And now Dukmeka is now relying on Kate Colony to buy him out of his contract with Amu Bediako. And for, for the past two years, he has abandoned his contract. This, for me, as, as a boxer, is not right. And if Amu Bediako wants to be seen as a bad person. Amu Bediako has all the right to take Dukmaka to court because Dukmaka is running away from his contract. And initially, you may mention that people are blaming Amu Bediako because of the career of Dukmaka because, because Dukmaka was a little bit disrespectful. For, I mean, look, recently, uh, Andre Bruna called out TDC, uh, uh, um, IAMON, he called out Showtime Board. And the runner was most disrespectful to these two gentlemen, but nobody cut him off. Mayweather, God will when he was calling out uh, uh, um, Top Run Board, that is Bob Arum. Bob Arum did not cut Mayweather off, but he was still supporting Mayweather until Mayweather bought himself out of the contract. In God's work, when Ryan Garcia was, 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 was at it against 
uh, Oscar de la Hoya. But Oscar de la Hoya was still man, uh, managing or promoting uh, Elian Garcia. The issue about Dukmaka is not about me, I'm mean, there for stalling his career, but it is Dukmaka himself stalling his own career, which for me, he need education. And for, 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 for a manager to be investing in a boxer and for the boxer to be trying to be selfish, trying to, 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 to run away from the contract that he has signed, I think it is, it is, it is, it is a bad uh, um, storyline on the part of the minor. And for me, you need to be talked to for the past two years, it's year to serve in the ring. And no manager is willing to invest in Dukmaika based on the kind of behavior that he has. No manager will be, will be investing a lot of money in Dukmaika because whenever he sees new manager, he try to, like uh, Kenneth said, he, he will try to ban off the other manager so that he can get good faith with the new manager, which for me as a boxer, that shouldn't be his behavior. He should, he should, he should be a little bit professional. For me, Dukmaika hasn't been professional. When it comes to the case between him and Amu Bideaku, Amu Bideaku has done a lot for this manager. That same manager that you, you are bad marking, that same manager took you to the world level, that same manager got you a world title shot, that same manager managed to lure people for you to get a platform on TV. So I think Dukmaika is failing to live up to the brilliant because of the kind of attitude that he has. And for Ghanaian boxers, like you said, as a manager, even if you want to take a percentage out of, out of the boxes pay. You have to make sure that you document everything. Because we know the kind of boxes that we are dealing in Ghana. They will say one thing today, tomorrow they will, say, they will be saying another thing. And for, 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 for a boxer to, 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 to move away from his contract, then it means that you are doing something wrong which you need to be checked. And that is what the matter has done. We shouldn't, people shouldn't say that when it comes to which in the latest story, we are saying different things. When it comes to the matter story, we are saying different things. For which in the story, he has every right to take his manager on. For Dukmaika, he, he has no right. He has, he has, he has abandoned his contract. Come again. What about Wasiru Mohamed? For Wasiru Mohamed, I would say I, I, I don't have privy to, to his contractual issue with his manager. What about Jesse Mojo? So, <laughs> For my opinion, I would say it is a bad decision that he took. He took a bad decision for me to move to the United States thinking that a was manager will decision? help you. It was the decision of the managers. And that was, I'm saying that it was a bad decision on the part of my opinion. Because at, 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 at long last, it, it, took, it took the decision. When a boxer simply follows uh, what the management, you know, ascribes. How is it a bad decision? On one hand, we are saying that Boxers should be obedient to their managers. We are saying that they should, as much as possible, uh, listen to their managers so that whatever plans that the manager has for the boxer, they can implement it successfully. On the other hand, we are saying that, that a typical case like Manu, we are saying that, okay. oh, he made a bad decision simply because he followed the, what do you call it, uh, those parameters that were set okay. by his manager. Okay, Sammy, it's good that you study marketing. Before you subscribe yourself to a particular product, you have to know that the product that you are going to get is a good product. Mm -hmm. The manager that uh, Manuel Planch signed with, what is his track record? But watch something. You can never be sure of a product. In marketing, they say that this is the point of truth. The point of truth is when you come face to face with the product, when, when you are able to, as it were, probably taste the product. You know, you, you have branding. People brand things, package it nicely, and you feel like, oh, yeah, this is what I want. I mean, like, at a point, if you ask me what noodles were, I'll tell you it's Indomie. Why? Because consistently they will see it in my mind. So I know that, oh, noodles, Indomie. That's, I'm sure most Ghanaians will tell you the same. That is, that is a branding kind of thing. The person has branded it and packaged it in my mind. So consistent positioning has created an image in my mind. So noodles is, is Indomie. You understand? Okay. Now, so, I will only be able to justify whether or not this is a good noodle or bad when I come face to face with it. That's when I taste the product. So you, I mean, it's very unfair to say that, okay, because uh, probably his case has gone sour, we should lay the fault at his doorsteps. Because then 
how will he how will he have known? I mean, you if 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 I'm a boxer and I've been told come to the USA or I'm taking you to the USA, so I'll get you good fights and all that. I'll be excited. I don't know which Sorry. other do due diligence again I should do as a boxer. Sorry. Yeah. You have to because I don't want to mention him. The box and the manager that brought him to the US. He has to trust everybody. He has other boxers. It's not somebody who is new to the game. It's somebody who has been in the game. Yes, I just don't want to mention it. He has boxers that he said is 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 promoting or is managing. But you have to look and see whether those boxers are going to that. I, I, I really need you to mention names. I look here. Yeah, we are, we hold no prisoners. You know that for okay. Right? The manager that brought him was, yes. was that same manager that was managing um, Abi Mohammed. Yes. Yes. And Abi Mohammed got his chance. You know, he fought against some of the best, though he couldn't, you know, win his. But he, he got no title no, shot. I mean, we shouldn't. Have to, I mean, yes. let's call it. Abi Mohammed, listen, Abi Mohammed got the opportunity to fight Gilberto Ramirez because. That time it wasn't with that manager because Abi Mohammed was ranked among the first five boxers in the world. So he got up that opportunity. Not because that manager secured that uh, and fight for him. But Abi Mohammed got that opportunity because of his ranking in the WBU. So I'm saying that before you sign with a manager, sometimes you have to send the as a boxer, you are entrusting your career into somebody's hands. Hmm. Okay. Well, David. Uh, uh, hold it there. I want to bring in uh, Kenneth. Kenneth, um, you know, I always say that when we meet in locations like this, time becomes our biggest enemy. Look, um, I have over 200 messages. I can read them. I know for a fact. Some from very important personalities. I was just being selective, but I can't do all that. But um, it's, you know, it gladdens my heart to know that all these big personalities are watching the show and, and whatever we say becomes an authority. Let me ask you this. So far, with everything that have listed, I can cite so many cases that have gone sour with boxes. You know, even Bukum Banku will tell you it has to do with managerial issues. Pasti Same will tell you it has to do with managerial issues. So what is this evil call manage, management or managers? Is it a case of a Ghanaian thing or what? And what is the solution going forward? What are the things we can do so that all these things will be will nip in the back? Well, to piggyback off what Daniel said, uh, where someone might argue and say, well, on one hand, when we talk about Richard Harrison Larte, we are siding with the fighter. But on one, on the other hand, when we're talking about Duke Michael, we're siding with the manager. I think it's because you have to look at things on a case by case basis. You can't just paint a broad brush when it comes That's to true. these situations. Um, you know, Wasiru Muhammad has a different situation. Uh, Jesse Manuel Plange was in a, a, a different situation. Not every one situation is the same. But one thing that I think we can all agree on is that in Ghana, when it comes to boxing, there's a certain cancer that is being spread around. And it starts, they say the, 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 the fish head, uh, you know, the, the rock begins at, at, at the head. Uh, there's a certain cancer that's spread and it's rolled down to the fighters. And now we're seeing the fighters behave in a manner based on how they've been treated by the managers and the historical examples that we can look at. A lot of Ghanaian managers, unfortunately, have no interest in developing the fighters. They are more interested in making a return. And I understand that obviously it's a business, you know, we all want to see a return on our investment, but the best way to maximize your earning potential is to develop your fighter so he can reach his maximum potential and the earnings will be greater for everybody. And that has not been the case in Ghana. And so when, once a fighter, certain Ghanaian managers will push a fighter until they can get a certain ranking, give them a title shot when truly they're not ready for the title shot because they just want to make their money back. And then when they get that title shot, they take a greater percentage of the money than what is what the terms dictate they should and then they move on and this thing continues and so fighters are now trying Ghanaian fighters are trying to be a step ahead of the managers and moving in a certain manner which is also unethical but not unlike what the managers are doing now the case of duke micah is different because he had a manager who uh 
not only had experience in Ghana, but who also had experience in the U United Kingdom and operated in a different light. So, so Duke brought that certain mentality that is, you know, pervasive in the Ghanaian boxing community to an international situation. And now he's suffering because of it. But, but, but that is the issue. So I think that the solution uh, to this problem is that one, managers need to act ethically. That is the, the number one issue. I am sorry if your fighter who you had grand designs for managed to lose before you got a return on your investment, but that gives you no right to take money that belongs to that fighter. You can't do it in any other sort of business in this world. And fighters need to protect themselves as well. Make sure you have a, a lawyer, an accountant, someone who can oversee some of these things and prevent these things from happening. And as Doc mentioned before, um, you know, there should be representation on both sides so that, you know, both sides are aware that it's a fair deal. But at the end of the day, this is this, this is business 101. You just have to live up to the terms of your agreement. Well, indeed. Of course, I'll come to you, Kenneth. Uh, pretty soon. But no, I, I'm trying to get solutions. I have someone here who is telling me, who sent me a message from the camp of Umaika, saying that uh, the manager hasn't been calling him. I mean, but look, I don't want to dwell on the problems. I, I Like I said, you know, like here I'm looking for solutions. At this point in time, I'm just looking for solutions. Well, Sammy, I would, I would tell you that, as you said, prominent people are watching this. So you one day, you are going to get to the bottom of this. Like uh, somebody said, the Duke might be the one, uh, you know, like I just want to make sure that this issue is nipped in the bud. Yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. The manager is happy. He is happy. Because the messages I'm getting, dog. Sam, Sam, but I'm, this, I'm, is, I'm this sure. is a start. Remember, I was telling you that the uh, Mr. Bediako has been trying to get with Micah for two years now. Somebody is telling you that the manager has not done that. I, I put a challenge to you that you bring both of them on or individually and let's see who is lying. This is how we find solutions. They can even bring their legal representatives right now. If they don't want to, if they don't want to do no, because this is what happens, Sam. That somebody is saying I've been trying to call them, somebody's been trying to call them. Who is lying here? We have to get to the bottom of that. But I think that um Kenneth summarize today's show for us and we have to start somewhere we, we, we're not done yet a whole <laughs> from the of business. I, I just want to hit something I, not. I want to re-emphasize something that he said mm. Mm. Uh, sometimes we we can't even blame any of them because of how these boxes have been treated in the past by some of the managers from ghana or elsewhere when they get the opportunity they want to get away. The managers, because of how they have also been treated by some boxers getting away from them, when they get opportunity, they want to cash out right away. So we have to get to a point where we want to work together. We want to make money together, come to the mecca of boxing and make money together where the boxer is not jumping on the next good manager or the manager is not trying to cash out right away. That is the only way. Look, and, and now, it, now my, my, my question to you is this. What should a boxer do? What should a manager do? So that some of these issues, if not totally halted, will at least bring to the minimum. What are the things that the other people are doing right that we are not doing right? So that's that's what I, I would say that in, in, in the legal world, first, there have to be contracts understood by everyone. I think secondly, there has to be a relationship. I have a boxer here who is willing to come on, on, like, come on record, telling me that he signed a contract for two years. Little did you know that the contract has been changed to five years, and he had no idea. And this is a big personality, and these are the things they face, as it were. Like, you know, Sami, I'm being honest with you. Look, I signed the. I was told two years. I painted my signature. The contract turned out to be five years. When I thought I was free, I was supposed to go my way. They, they tell me I still have three years, and I'm like, "Where's all these things coming from?" I don't want to dwell on the problems. I, I think really want Sam, to we are trying to find solution, but solution. Sammy, you yes. don't get solutions when you don't get the truth, right? So the only way to get to the solutions, I think you should even have, <laughs> if you really want to get to the cancer of Ghana boxing, you should really have an expose of some of these managers and boxes 
so that the truth is out there. That's the only way we stop. Honestly, otherwise, you're going to hear from only one side, one side, one side, one side. So the like, GBA has decided that anytime a boxer wants to sign a contract, uh, they want to be privy to it. They want to be there. They want to have a copy of that contract. Is that the way to go, Doc? I mean, the, the Ghana Boxing Authority is an authority. Um, but legally, I mean, legally, they, they don't have to be. A, a contract is between a boxer and a manager. But if the boxer feels like they need someone like that there or a family member, that whoever they bring as witnesses, it doesn't matter where they are from. As long as they are witnesses and they can attest to it when there is a problem, that is all matters. It doesn't matter which section that they come from. And we don't want to get to a point where the GBA is even detecting what goes into a contract. That becomes a conflict of interest in, in some way. Uh, but if there's, there's a way of them to help boxers not to be cheated, and the boxer wants the GBA president or whoever to be their witness, it's, it's their call. They can bring whoever. But there has to be that transparency. There has to be those witnesses so that whatever is being signed is understood. Honestly, if you ask me, I don't know where, when we are going to cut this thing out of the heads of boxes that, hey, forget about money just cheating under boxes. Try to work with me. I don't know how we're going to cut it out of money just head that, hey, stop trying to make your money right now with your big, or big first um, fight. Build on them for the thousands of hundreds of dollars in the future. I don't know, but that is the mindset that should happen. That boxers need to understand that whoever they are working with cares about them. I always say that. Just say, let's make money together. Let's make money together is the language that should be spoken between boxers and managers. And because what am I going to do with $10,000 if I can build you to get to $100,000? But unless the managers don't believe in the boxers or they are scared that these boxers are going to jump ship. That's exactly what they are going to do. They're going to want their money out. So we have to get to a point where money just don't feel like that and boxers don't feel like that. Okay, so I have a, another very big promoter uh, here who is saying that. So, I mean, you're going to have to invite us as well for us to also escalate some of the challenges we've been facing with boxers. I, I, I understand uh, the blah, 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 blah of, of your guests. Uh, but we also have our challenges as well. Of course, I am not to waste about it. Of course, definitely I'll bring I'll bring some promoters here. Not to waste about it. But here, the people who are talking are uh, boxing, not just connoisseurs, but they are stakeholders when it comes to boxing. And we are all trying to find solutions. I'm sure just like you have made other admissions to the to the fact that they are making wonderful submissions. This this is what we are looking for, and this is what we want, you know, going forward. But Kenneth, let me bring you in. Kenneth. Uh, I need you to not just summarize this whole thing for me, but I need you. I need you to bring this home for me. Going forward, what should a manager do? Going forward, what should a box do so that even if we can't eliminate this, we'll bring it to the the barest minimum. Probably, what what can we do in this circumstance? I know that it's a big problem. It is something that needs holistic review and all that. You have the GBA saying that they've implemented certain things. Which they think will go a long way, i.e., whenever there is a contractual issue, they won't be privy to it and all that. Doc has said that he doesn't think is a way to do it. It's one of the ways. He doesn't think it's the main way to go because you know stretching it will probably be a conflict of interest, which is understood from that angle. But for you, Kenneth, where you sit, you you have a lot of experience and everything. You've had first-hand knowledge with the system, as in the U.S. system. You don't really have that that very much or even if you do it's in the like the barest minimum what can we do to make sure that we attain that same height solutions is what i'm looking for well i think doc has a good point regarding the the gba the gba should not be involved in that uh the gba is already dealing with their own conflict of interest uh as far as the professional ghana boxing league so i think the last thing any manager or promoter wants then is to have a competitor review their contract that they have with their own fighter um so I, I agree with I agree with Doc there. Uh, regarding the solution, I think it's as simple as anything else uh, that Sammy, you and I, you know, I both know uh, should be done uh, as it relates to to documents and agreements. Both sides uh, should have representation. That's why you have witnesses, and and for the fighters, they need uh, 
someone with the uh, background to review some of the agreements that they signed and who can tell them what it is that they are agreeing to. Quite frankly, this is an issue all over the world, but it's entrenched uh, in, in, in Ghana boxing. So um, we can speak about solutions, but the the true solution starts from within, and, and that would involve an attitude change uh, from the people on both sides. Well, thank you. That's I think that's a fantastic point. David, let me bring you in here. Um, so going forward, probably attitude change must, must be, you know, something that we look out for. What are the other things that you think we can do to improve our boxing in terms of management and, uh, you know, boxers who are who feel aggrieved? Of course, I have managers and promoters who are sending me messages who are equal also aggrieved, telling me, elaborating certain things that they think boxers are equal also doing, which they feel is untoward. But David, let's nip this thing and bring this thing home. What is your solution? Give me two and let's just uh, get out of the studio. Yes, I mean, the other truth is um, for the sports to grow, we, you cannot have an agreement between uh, a manager and a boxer without being properly documented. For me, the GBA is out of the equation now because whenever there's an issue between the boxer and the manager or the promoter, the that the, 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 the person that should be sitting on the case, yeah, which is the GBA, the, the, like uh, uh, Kenneth said, they are dealing with their own conflict of interest, so they are out of the equation now. Like, as, whether being the manager or the boxer, you have to get a proper rep, a witness that is trustworthy. Because of document changes, you have to get somebody that you can trust, whether being your family member or your, you know, somebody that you can trust. Secondly, one thing that is, is not done in Ghana, which I think we are lacking in all our sports, not only boxing, it's not every lawyer that can review like a, a sports contract. A contract which is drawn in sports is totally different from a normal contract which is drawn like in selling a land to you. We lack sports lawyers in the country. Like, we normally take any contract to any lawyer just to review it. But we have to get sports lawyers in the country. Maybe if the GBA can initiate that, get sports lawyer that can work with the GBA so that they can be reviewing all the contracts from boxers or managers. And I think that will help a lot because most of the boxers or managers, like, it is on and on. It's either the boxer is being duped by the manager or the uh, manager is being duped by the boxer. So I think this is a clear case of a situation that as stakeholders, mm. we have to... They're going to have to wrap up for me. Focus on it so that we can eradicate this kind of petty, petty issues in our game for our sports to grow. Okay, thank you so very much, Daniel David Cote, my co-host. Let me bring Doc in so that we wrap up <laughs> fast spend time. Doc, um, I also want your solution, but I, I want you to narrow it on this. With Duke Micah and Michael Angubidiakun, what is the solution? We want both two to be happy and we want to see Duke Micah fighting, we want to see Angubidiakun equal also happy. Your solution. I, I, I have a great interest in seeing um duke back back in the ring i think the solution starts with i mean they, they already are working on the legal stuff but i think from where we come from the two of them need to talk they need to sit down have a talk about the future and and i'll say that managers be, maybe duke may not know but sometimes people co-manage you know trying to buy your way out of a contract it's not the way I think they should have a talk, even if he wants to bring the other guys in. Who doesn't want to make money? As long as I know you have the talent. He never know, but it first starts with talking. Someone needs to pick up the call and call uh, on the phone and call someone, and they should start talking so that his career can start back up. They need to either he needs to honor the contract he has with Mr. Bediako or if he wants to bring other people in, I don't know, maybe Bediak, Mr. Bediak will be receptive to that. But at the end of the day, if there is a contract, it needs to be honored. If he, if this had been going on and I don't know how many years it's left on the contract, 
Um, by now, it, it probably would be ending soon, and he could have moved on. But with this stalling, I'm, I'm probably sure there's some clause in there that kind of stalls the contract from moving on. So that's more years being wasted. So they just my solution is they need to sit down and talk. Talent and future money cannot go to waste. That's my solution. Okay, well, I like he's telling me that if I don't read his message, he's not going to talk to me for one whole year. He says that who, he who lives by the sword, died by the sword. He says that's basically what a media could do to uh, uh, Jacob's awareness. So if do, Micah is doing with uh, uh, Kenoli, then it's. Uh, but anyway, look, like, I don't, uh, Elijah, you see, we sit here and we can hear about all the excuses, problems, issues, and all that. Who and suffers? Then, what I am very much interested in is the solution. Um, we, I don't sit here and I pride myself because people are bringing in certain exposés and no, I have all that. For instance, I have a letter which can really indict Amin Lamte big time, but I've decided to sit on it. You know, why? Why? Because I'm thinking about the progress of Ghana boxing. There are certain things that we are privy to, we just decide not to bring it, you know, right? Because you know that this will just crumble the system. So, Sorry. so I what I'm saying... I hijack your show, uh -huh. but with the person that said that uh, Mr. Bediako did the same to Mr. Zuanes. Who is losing here? Is it Mr. Bediako or the no, box? I don't want to be elaborating on. No, I, what, what will I, make, what I will I make like the more we go, These messages that I've decided to hide. It needs to make sense. Most of who them have been wild, 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 I, wild allegations. Sammy, I, want to I don't interject know. I'm not privy to some of these things. That's why I don't want to read them. Sammy, Sammy, I want to interject here for the audience okay. talk, talking. I, I, you know, Daniel made a point regarding... Uh, uh, Mr. Connolly and the fact that uh, mm. perhaps Mr. Connolly would buy out the contract, but it should be noted here that it was Michael Amubidiaku who brought Mr. Connolly into the equation, and and so you know the um, the idea that it, 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 there just seems to be a lot of confusion regarding the situation, and I think that to, to Doc's point, we should just if if the two parties come together. Uh, sit down, uh, discuss things, have have representatives that can be resolved. But what Doc kind of alluded to, but probably doesn't want to say, is at this point it's almost moot. We are we are years in, and unfortunately, a lot of the damage has been done. I don't I don't want to buy that, Kenneth. Now I'm putting this before you, and I, and and this is a challenge to you, Kenneth. I know that you you very much privy to these issues. I know that you have a lot of influence, both with the boxer and the manager as well, Kenneth. Tell me on this show right now that the next time we bring you on this platform, you'll be telling me that, yes, you've helped arbitrate the issues between <laughs> you and Duke Micah and everything has been resolved. Uh, look, I want this show to be, you know, uh, what is the word again? I mean, uh, we should be able to achieve our target. We should be able to, when we say something, we should be able to do it. I don't want this show to be a talk show. Kenneth, can you promise me that? Well, I'm I, sure I've already done almost like 30 minutes or more extension. Yes, can it? I, 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 show me that. I, I have enough time with my children. So, I, I you know, <laughs> what, what you're asking for is, 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 is fairly difficult. You know, uh, the reality is that without giving, without saying too much further, because I think we, we've said enough on this show, um, uh, those who are, in that situation and understand what's going on, need know what the, the solution is. And so I don't want to continue to indict one person. Um, they know what it is that they have to do to get it done. I think uh, a, a few people on here have tried to arbitrate the situation before. And so, um, you know, God helps those who help themselves. That's deep. Doc, <laughs> I'm still gonna have to wrap up. David, uh, okay. David, what have you learned from this show? In terms of the solutions, you and I, let's try and do this real quick. Let's sum the whole thing up from, from our guests. What I've learned that we need probably um, a sports lawyer, not just uh, any other lawyer. I've learned that boxers uh, need to honor their contracts. I've also learned that managers need to spelt out everything, you know, even when they give certain monies which are outside the contractual issues, they must make sure that they put it in there for the contract uh, for the boxer to sign. Uh, what are the other things you've learned so that we wrap up real quick? Uh, it's the same thing. Like we have learned a lot as 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 a boxer, you should be truthful. As a manager, you should be truthful. And like 
I I feel the pain of Kenneth Boeri. It's not that like it's not it's not ready to arbitrate the case, but he put his himself in he put his image image out there and he got disappointed by Dubmaker because of his behavior. So I think um as a boxer or as a manager or as a promoter, you have to be truthful. You have to stay true to the contract that you sign. And for me the only advice that I have for Dubmaika is if you have you haven't got anybody to buy you out of your contract, you just go on back and honor your contract. And after two years or three years, you, be, you become a free agent and you can decide on whether to work with him or continue to work with him or you go to a different manager. Other than that, he is rather losing. His talent is not dwelling. Now he hasn't fought for two years. Who is taking care of you? He has a kid. He has a wife. So I think the best decision for him is to go back and honor his contract and become okay. a free man. Okay. Uh, well said, though. But look, boxing courts won't be noted for getting things done you know like and and we'll follow up with this we'll probably have a chat with Amugidiakwa as well uh he's the uh the eldest one so we probably will crave on his indulgence to break certain bridges and make this happen that will see to it for many of you who have, who have those concerns yes we definitely will see to that well this is where i had to draw down the curtains for another exciting edition of boxing court yeah the topic was very interesting of course you had those wonderful personalities you had what we had kenneth buhari of uh, boxing africa check it out boxingafrica.com and of course he's also the director for our Heyman sports uh, he was here and of course he embedded us with a lot of you know knowledge and of course insights and we're very much grateful of course op was also with us he's with ace tv he's a, a youtuber and very well bit as well when it comes to boxing of course my co-host daniel david Cote. to many of you that sent me messages that i couldn't read first of all do forgive me i promise you i'm trying to get a certain you know segment where we just read messages uh do forgive me i promise that next week i'll do better uh till i come your way same time next week my name has been samuel Fosini. you do have a great 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 week and uh like i always say positive anything is better than a negative something thank you all uh thanks to all my guests and thanks to everyone that made the show the show Bye for now, and I'll see you when I see you.